when I was a kid, I played with Hot Wheels cars, and I remember um, rolling them through a loop. I don't remember exactly how this was set up. I seem to recall that in the loop section, the track was sold in segments, and you could actually remove the top segment, so it would look something more like this. Okay, now this presents a threat, right? If the car is released from really high, it's going to have a lot of gravitational potential energy, which means by the time it converts it all into kinetic energy, it's going to be moving very fast. And if it goes too fast, it'll have a lot of tangential velocity and end up flying out of the loop. Of course, you could release it from a height that's too low. Even if you released it from a height that was equal to the height of the top of the loop, based on the law of conservation of energy, the potential energy at point A could all be returned at point B if there's no frictional loss. The problem is, if the initial velocity here is zero, then when it gets all its potential energy back again, the velocity here would be zero, which means it would fall straight down. So somewhere between this height and this height is the sweet spot where the car would make it through the loop and not require any normal force due to the fact that the track is missing right here. Now, I want to compare this to a roller coaster. So we start out, and it goes click, 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 as the chain drive pulls it up here and gives it gravitational potential energy. But once it rounds the top of this hill, it's no longer connected to the chain, and all that gravitational potential energy is released and converted to kinetic energy. And it continues to roll through reaches a lower height, and so therefore still has some remaining mechanical energy in the form of kinetic energy to give it the velocity to continue to navigate the curve. Now, if this hill is really tall, just any particular value of h, then the free body diagram that represents the forces acting on the roller coaster at the top of the loop would include not only mg, but also some normal force, right? the sum of forces would be equal to mg plus n. Since this is a roller coaster loop, the sum of all force would have to be centripetal. So we say mv squared over r equals mg plus n. So you can see that the velocity v is a function of normal force, or vice versa. The greater the velocity, the more normal force there would be. That's not what you pay for when you go to the amusement park. You don't want a sensation of having a lot of contact with your seat as you go through the loop. You want very little contact with your seat. You want to experience a sensation of weightlessness. In fact, in the limiting case, you want this normal force to disappear. That's the real thrill. So if there's no normal force in this equation, now we can cancel out the m, and we see that v squared is equal to rg. Well, now let's consider what the law of conservation of energy has to say about this. We'll compare the energy at point A with the energy at point B. I'm going to set a reference level where h equals 0 at the ground. So we can see at point B, the roller coaster is at a height of 2r, right? The diameter, twice the radius. So we're going to call this h subscript m to stand for the minimum height that allow for the roller coaster to just have a zero amount of contact force. So setting the energy at point A equal to the energy at point B, this is just an exchange of gravitational potential energy for kinetic energy plus some smaller amount of remaining gravitational potential energy, right? It's at a height here, it's at a larger height here. So in fact, the initial gravitational potential energy is equal to mgh minimum. Kinetic energy, of course, is 1 half mv squared. And then we have a remaining potential energy of mg2r. There's an m in every term, so I'm going to cancel that out. And now I'm going to make a substitution for v squared based off what we found from our free body diagram and understanding a centripetal force. So v squared is replaced with rg. So g times h minimum is equal to 1 half rg plus 2rg. There's a g in every term, so we cancel that out. 
and we end up at the final result. The minimum height would be equal to 5 halves r. In my next uh, video, I'll actually demonstrate this. I have an apparatus that looks something like this, and I can roll the ball from very high, and you'll hear that it always maintains contact with the loop. I'll roll the ball from this height, and you'll see that it makes it to the top of the loop, but crashes. And so we'll try to find the sweet spot where the normal force seems to be zero at the top of the loop. Thanks for watching, and please watch that next video.